Hey, this is Evangelis Echo Boy. I'm really happy that I return for another um, series of uh, tutorials for you. Um, back in 2018, I think I did one for uh, for Sonic Academy, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So I'm very glad that I'm back for another uh, session. Um, I'm gonna show you my techniques and how I lay down a track from scratch, how I uh, create a kick and uh, my basses and then how uh, um, I import my beats and the whole process of creating a Dirty House track. So without further ado, let's dive directly into the production. And uh, first thing that at least what I do as a producer is I start from, from the kick and the bass because you know, these are the core elements anyway of a, of a dance track. So um, I'm using kick two because I find it as a very intuitive uh, plugin. You can straight away create a kick um, and it's so useful. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are using it. If you don't, just <laughs> go and get it. It's, it's a lifesaver. So right here I have a kick, uh, a 909 kick, uh, which is from the stock samples of uh, of kick two. And it's dope already, you know. What I've done here is not much. Uh, I just uh, clicked on the distortion and uh, messed a little bit with uh, the controls. Without a distortion, it sounds something sounds like this. So it has some top end, which when I click distortion and you filter it, it sounds like this. Now, if you want to do something like uh, a more uh, edgy, let's say tech house, it's, uh, you know, most of the times I distort uh, elements. In this case, uh, distortion for a kick, it's a must, at least for me. So that's it. I play a little bit with a release because I don't want it to be too long. So I want it punchy and snappy. Yeah, you know, I'm happy with that. And uh, not much else, you know, I don't have clicks here. I've removed, I've removed them. Uh, some people like to use clicks because it gives uh, that sense of um, a com compressed sound. And yeah, you know, if you want to use it, um, you can use it, of course. <clears throat> so that's my kick. I have it here. And so it's great already. You know, directly into the bass, I'm using Anna. This is another lifesaver, you know. Out of these plethora of uh, synthesizers and VST instruments, uh, I believe this is a truly intuitive plugin. Uh, it's very complex. Uh, you have a lot of stuff that you can work with and a lot of parameters, um, but I will keep it straight. I will keep it simple because I truly believe that if you keep simple, at least your kicks and your basses, uh, you have solid cores and that's, that's, what, that's what you're after. So uh, what I've done here, I didn't uh, go into um, a preset. I just hit initialize. So when you hit initialize, it will give you um, a saw waveform. I chose the square because it's um, it's rich harmonically, and uh, then I just cut off the sound, and this is our result. So if you're after a sound like Dead Left or a Populate Mars type of, um, don't try to mess a lot of with the parameters. That's how it sounds. You know, just play with the cut out of a little bit. Yeah, that's instant, you know. I actually like that. And I have a couple of takes here, but I'm going to record that as well. Let's do that. Yeah, maybe not the second part. Let's just keep the first part going. 
Yeah, it's working. And this sound, as I said, is just a, a square wave. I um, gave a little bit of the sub oscillator here, like as you see, 30%, otherwise without it, it sounds like this. So it's not much. Okay, and because Anna has uh, very snappy envelopes, um, I have it like this here, both my amp and my filter envelope are around 0.2 here, millisecond, milliseconds, and my amp is around 2, because if you take it lower, you will start to have clicks, and I don't want that. So around 2 milliseconds, you lose the, the clicks. Sounds like that. Nice. From then on, it's just perfect. Uh, you know your taste, your personal taste. How you how the filter one, what you want to make it sound. If you want it more subby or more open. I want it around here, so I have some of my mids coming out. Because I'm gonna process it after and gonna push it around 500 hertz, so it give, gives me that body, you know. That sounds good. I have a couple of patterns here. Yeah, they're all. Three ideas here, right away. <laughs> it's difficult to choose because right now you have like three tracks and it's uh, all these ideas are coming directly you're inspired from the synth yeah i'm just gonna go with a i think and let's build the track This hi-hat is coming from a sample pack I did uh, some years ago for Insert Coin, and you can find it. You can find the sample pack on uh, on the site of Sonic Academy. It's uh, my raw loops. I was doing music under my original name as Vangelis Kostoksenakis. So this is a hi-hat. This is a 909. It's already a bit processed. So now that I came, you know, the, now that I am really happy with my kick, I'm go just gonna go uh, print it and make it audio because I really like working with audio. I think it has much way better, way better manipulation in terms of uh, syncing and, um, you know, doing tricks and everything. Um, so selected track. This is my kick. Boom. And uh, as I will show you later uh, during the session, I'm working uh, with Unity Game. That means that all of my faders here, uh, they are on 0 dB and I'm working the gains uh, from, uh, from the DAW, directly from the DAW. Uh, one of the tricks that you might know or don't know, I will tell you anyway, is that um, and one of the mistakes that most of the producers are doing, you know, they're just cranking the the fader zero dB or more if the sound is uh, sounds you know the the volume doesn't sound that good uh, and and it's a little bit low what they're doing is just cranking the faders or cranking the gains or whatever so I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna tell you a small tip that you might know or don't as I said initially uh, and this comes from the analog uh, uh, territory because I studied and I grew up with this type of techniques and it works great in the digital uh, domain. So when you 
um, make sure when you're when you're doing levels and you're starting your mix um, that your kick is picking at around minus 10 dB. So, so this is way uh, loud. So I'm just gonna boom. Let's mute this a little bit. So this is minus 10 and it's without plugins, all right? So I'm just gonna give a little bit of headroom. Just lower this in volume. So this is minus 15, all right? So I'm just gonna insert now um, an EQ. Uh, there are plenty of EQs that I'm working. I'm a UAD head. Um, but for the sakes of these tutorials, I'm gonna work in both worlds, both the stock plugins from Logic and some UAD, so I give my signature sound. Now for the EQ, I'm just gonna go with the channel EQ from Logic. Okay. And I'm gonna push it in 80 dB. I'm doing a low cut here and I'm putting, I'm uh, giving the most of the energy in the low end. And I'm filtering from 40 Hertz and down. So I'm happy with that. Now, if you want to give body, you can choose 500. If you want to take out the body, so I'm just gonna give a little bit, you know, like three dBs. And then I'm gonna compress it. I'm gonna use the compressor from uh, <clears throat> Universal Audio. This is the 1176, one of their first uh, compressors. So this is minus eight. So minus 10, we're good. It's punchy. And now I'm gonna have a second EQ, which I'm gonna bypass here and there. Oops, sorry, this is the compressor. Let me copy that here. Come on. I'm gonna have that. Now let's do the bass. I like all three to be honest with you. But this is the beauty of save as, you know, because you can save three different or whatever um, versions always get go back to another uh, track to another uh, version of, a, of the track because I'm gonna you're gonna commit <laughs> with this one here okay let me see about the sound of my bass I like it how it is I think here plays better yeah Cool, I'm gonna print that as well. Let's put it in here. So bouncing place, I'm gonna uh, select the track that I want and I'm not gonna delete the source, I'm just gonna mute it because who knows, maybe I'm gonna use it later. Let's see. So. Sounds good. So same technique here, I'm going to low cut some of the low end. So it doesn't phase with my kick. And I'm gonna give some body. 
because that extra crunch is gonna come out, especially when you low cut later. And this is exactly what I mean. Just compress it a little, a little bit. So let's resume here and uh, give some. Now, if you want to sidechain it in order to. Uh, Round it a little bit, you can do it. I'm not a fan of side chaining in general. I'm gonna keep it like that. And this is exactly what I was saying before when you low cut. That sounds nice. gonna do those tricks later in the production. I'm gonna create now um, my beats. I'm gonna do it super fast for you. I don't wanna bore you with that stuff, but I'm doing a track from scratch. So I want you to see my whole procedure. Uh, I'm just gonna grab from the stock of Logic some of the sounds. different one yeah I like that mo much much more but I'm gonna make it snappy too Okay, you can do that as well with a gate. Directly to a select. I don't want that. Delete that. Boom. As you can see, I'm working mono with such elements. No reason to have them stereo unless they are stereo. Um. Let's compress that as well. And let's do, oh, this is quite loud. Quick tip, when you mix it with a fader to the desired uh, volume, so let's say here it's minus 18, sounds nice. Then you put your gain minus 18 and you do the unity gain. So it sounds the same again. So this is my EXS. Let's see what else we can grab here. Uh, let's do that with a 808 rim shot. Yeah. I'm gonna 
quantize it, give it a little bit of swing. Yeah, that's it. This is the loop for the rim shot. Um, let's put it here, rim. So select, delete, fine, that's great. Let's do some grooves with a uh, snare. use two parts um, of this uh, groove the first one is going to be without um, this part here I'm gonna do the roll thing at the second part so no need for those here be boring if you have it all the time. Let's give some body. And some mids. Give that crispness. I'm gonna use again the. Oops, that, that was a wrong click. One of the nice things that this compressor has is that if you. Um, um, turn the attack and the release uh, really fast uh, and click all of the ratios. This is one of the um, things that you can do in the real thing. Uh, it makes it makes the sound more sound a little bit more saturated. As you can hear. Yeah. And let me grab a couple of top loops from my sample pack um, that I did for Insert Coin. So 
minus 26 for the gain. And let's see this second one, how it, how it sounds. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab the the hi hat. Do some quick edit here. Okay. All I need is the first hit. Okay. And now I'm going to. Uh, select my marquee tool and do repeats. A little bit of fade at the end of the file so I don't have any clicks. Great. Now I'm going to select again my marquee so I have an even loop like that. And I'm going to press join. Great. Let's see what we've done. Nice, that brings us in the first part of our session. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let's do a quick break and we'll get back with the second one. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.